Okay, for the last week of the course, we have studied some of the uh, elements that have not covered in a general chemistry course. Uh, what concepts uh, that you have learned during this week uh, would you highlight? Well, uh, this has been an interesting week uh, because, as you pointed out, uh, we have studied some elements that are not usually covered in a chemistry course. And people usually only have heard about them because of uh, crime movies, thriller novels, or even in the news due to their poisonous nature. Yeah, but it is quite interesting the important applications and uses that we have learned during this week. Some of uh, them are hardly to imagine in advance. That's right. It is totally awesome that polonium can be used uh, to eliminate static electric charge or the uses of arsenic in semiconductor industry. Besides this, human being, uh, humans have been fascinated with this element since antiquity. Uh, it is quite interesting to know uh, that, for example, the metal and metalloids uh, of group 15 were firstly isolated than a more common elements uh, such as nitrogen. Let's talk about the chemistry of these elements. What do you think about the variety of stable oxidation state that we have seen again in both groups? Yeah, precisely. We have observed again that these elements can exhibit both positive and negative oxidation states, and that has made the study quite more difficult. However, this question can be rationalized considering that for both groups the most typical oxidation number uh, are those related with the total loss of p electrons um, or the entire loss of the five or six valence electrons according to the, to the group. Uh, we have also studied that the higher oxidation states are more oxidizing as we move down the group. Again, the inner pair uh, effect play an uh, important role here. Uh, another aspect quite remarkable is that as we are uh, going down the group, the elements are more uh, metallic, so we observe a transition along the group between non-metals to metal properties. Yes, and this makes hard to classify some intermediate elements, such as selenium, for example. But although the metallic character is only found at the bottom of the group, the chemistry of the elements is mainly covalent, and the only case of a simple cation is uh, for bismuth 3 plus. Regarding the physical properties of these elements, is there any aspect that uh, would you like to mention or highlight? A lot of things. We have learned uh, how elements form from group 15 and 16, so a great variety of allotropies. Yes, indeed. Although uh, we have studied that the allotropy of the elements of group 15 is not so extensive that, for example, uh, for phosphorus in the same group. And in the case of tellurium and polonium, they show only one crystalline form. Exactly, uh, but polonium is the unique element uh, which crystallizes in a simple cubic form, and that is also an extraordinary fact. The rest of properties such as electronegativity, ionization energies, density or atomic size vary as expected along the group. Uh, well, there is an interesting fact, uh, and that is that the higher ionization energy of elements of group 15 uh, compared with their neighbors of group 16 and 14. The high special half-field electronic configuration has important effect uh, for that behavior. Yes, but also affects the fact that the group 15 elements have a lower negative electron affinity uh, than the group 14 elements, which represent another derivation from the uh, general trend. To finish our conversation, I would like to know what elements or combination do you think are the most important or representative in our daily life? Probably, those combination of arsenic and antimony with indium and gallium in semiconductor industry, uh, some of these compounds may be even preferable to germanium and silicon for some application. Yes, these uh, types of group uh, 13 and 15 compounds such as gallium, arsenide, present suitable energy uh, gaps and high carry mobilities and therefore show significant uh, photoelectric and uh, uh, electroluminescent effects. Yeah. It is also remarkable the use of some of these elements as additives to alloys in order to confer some important properties. Yeah, for example, antimony is one of the main alloying elements uh, for lead. Uh, arsenic is also used for lead and copper or tellurium for steel. And all of this without forgetting that also nowadays uh, we know that arsenic or antimony are toxic. They have been employed uh, as remedies in the antiquity. Uh, and also as an uh, ointment to darken eyebrows and eyelashes.